Just as a mountain stream finds the ocean, so to a spiritual seeker following the path of least resistance reaches God. <coughs> Would you please comment on this analogy? Hmm. So what is the commentary here? Hmm? Is it because you say that the path follows the path of least resistance? See, the mountain stream or any river, all the waters run towards the ocean. They want to reach the ocean. Why? Why should all the waters want to go back? I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said go back. <laughs> go to the ocean. Because that's where they came from. Hmm? They were originally ocean water. Hmm? By the heat of the sun, The vapor, water vapor goes up, forms into clouds, and then they get tossed by the wind here and there. And after some time of getting tossed, they want to come down to the ground. So ultimately they fall down as water drops, as rain. And there is another beauty in that analogy. When the rain water drops from the clouds, What is the quality of that water? Does it have any special odor, color, taste? Hmm? That means it's tasteless, colorless, odorless. It doesn't matter where it rains, in which part of the globe it rains, all the rainwater as they fall from the clouds, they are completely pure. Like the mind that we talked about last night. But when they come down closer to the earth, slowly they get the color of the smog over the earth, if it is coming closer to the cities. And then once they fall on the ground, they get the color of the ground. Hmm? It becomes red or black or hmm, brown. And then they take the odor also. But still, is rain water. But once they flow into a, a small hmm, rivulet or something, then it's no more rain water. It is the water from the rivulet. Hmm? If it is a bigger one, it is a river water. Hmm? If it falls into the lake, it becomes lake water. Hmm? 
it gets all the names. Red Sea, Dead Sea, Salt Sea. Hmm? You see? <laughs> huh? All these changes in form, color, name happens when they fall onto the ground. Until then they are pure. But still they know where they came from originally. So they ultimately want to reach the mother, the mother sea. So whenever there is an opportunity and there is no bond, or even if there is a bond, they try to break. They want to go down. It's almost like the lost souls. In a way, we were all, and we are all raindrops. We were in the sea, but somehow we got warmed up a little, steamed up a little. And then we rose up. And we got into the clouds. Sometimes dense clouds. And then we drop out from there. But still, until we come down, we are all pure souls. Nameless, formless, colorless, odorless. We are all equal. But once we fall, we get various names. Now you all fell on this soil. Now you call yourself Americans. There again, because you fell in Massachusetts, <laughs> You became a Bostonian, huh? or a Yankee, huh? or a Californian, huh? or a Howdy, huh? a cowboy. Huh? It depends upon where you fell. Huh? See? That's why, in a way, we are all called the fallen angels, huh? lost angels. From the holy wood, <laughs> we fell into the Hollywood. <laughs> but still, our souls remember the joy in which they lived on the mother's lap. So they want to experience that joy again. They're looking for that happiness. But in between, somehow, you get dammed up. Your speed is prevented, blocked. And then for a while, you think, oh, I'm quite happy here. I love it. For a while. And then again you say, oh no, I'm tired of it. I want to go back. <coughs> so when that urge comes to go back to the sea, you are looking for the sea hmm? to join. Is it not so? That's why you are called seeker. Right? The one who is running towards the sea is the seeker. The communion, the experience of God, 
to unite with God. Huh? Yoga. That is the analogy. A seeker is the one who runs towards the source. Wants to be with the mother, with the father. Because we are not happy here. Because our search is for happiness. To be happy always, not just temporary. But in that search, occasionally we come across a little happiness here and there. It's, oh yes, I found happiness. I think I can be happy here. Very soon it says, no, that's not the real happiness. That's a duplicate. <laughs> it's, a, it's not the real happiness, just a reflection. That's why we do all these things with one goal in mind. That goal is, I want to be happy. And we think that, oh, if I make a lot of money, I'll be happy. And with a lot of unhappiness, you make money. Because it's not easy to make money. And then you, when you have made enough money that you think that you can be happy with, the next immediate thing is, ah, should I go to H, uh, uh, H and what block is that? To H and R block. H &R block. <laughs> <laughs> because the IAs come. The IAs. <laughs> so that fear comes. Ten forty. <laughs> <laughs> that creates more unhappiness. We have to invest. So, you see, our goal is to be happy. And we are trying to do many, many things to be happy. Are we really getting that happiness? I mean permanent, temporary happiness, who wants? This temporary. And unfortunately, when the little temporary happiness comes, and when it goes, it becomes more unhappy. So we are not happy with this temporary happiness. We want permanent happiness. And in that pursuit, we are all alike. Everybody wants this, to be happy always. Why? Because I was happy before I went up and fell down. See? Otherwise, why do you even want happiness? If you have never tasted that permanent happiness, you won't even be wanting it. Is it not so? Suppose you say, yeah, I like to have some brownies. <laughs> that means you had before, is it not so? Huh? The, the mere fact that you want it means you had it before, you lost it now. That is the proof that once upon a time we were all happy people. But somehow we missed it. Now we are looking for that. In that sense, we are all seekers. Don't simply put one category as seekers and others not. We are all seekers. Seekers after happiness. Permanent happiness.
See, the people who are standing there are not happy. <laughs> Can we make them happy? Then come forward. Huh? Half the hall should be empty there. That's good. See, where there is will, there is way. Where, is, where there is heart, there is room. That's good. Huh? Well, that's why we are here, to come forward. Huh? Huh? So in a way, there is nobody who could be labeled as huh, an atheist huh, or a person without a religion or a person who doesn't believe in God. If you know the meaning of God, Everybody is looking for God. God as happiness. Anandam Brahma. Hmm? The scriptures say. The God's nature is blissful. Always happy. And we were all, and we are all children of that God. So, when we were close to that happiness, we enjoyed that happiness, somehow we seem to have missed it and we, have, we are looking for it again. And we are running towards that. We are putting all our efforts to make ourselves always happy. No matter what you do, even ask a bank robber, huh? Huh? what is he doing? Huh? To be happy, right? So, he has also the same goal. Ask the policeman, why are you searching for the robber? Huh? To be happy. Because if he can catch him, he will get a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> See, in this respect, both the policeman and the thief, they both have the same goal in mind. Maybe the approach is wrong. He wants some quick, instant happiness. As in 1960s, many of us looked for instant happiness. Om Namah Shivaya. Even now I come across people, Bham Mahadev. Instant happiness. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to ask how many experienced it. Huh? <laughs> nice. Yoga is also a kind of joint, no? <laughs> yeah? From one joint to another joint. <laughs> hmm? That's why hmm? I think during 68, one of the interviewers asked me, how come the people are leaving all their drugs and coming to you? I told him, I'm the biggest drug for them. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. From one drug to another drug. Yeah. So that is what this analogy means. We are all searching for the same thing. 
that we once experienced now seem to be missing. And certainly, we want some least resistance way, eh? how quickly I can get it. But unfortunately, it doesn't happen that way. We have to go through resistances. Why? Because only by passing through resistances, we become stronger. Resistance is necessary. A seed needs some sort of resistance. That's why you dig a hole, put it in, cover it up. And then it's, oh, yes, are you going to stop me here? I'm going to come up. <laughs> See? Yeah. If you simply say, well, I'm not going to resist. I'm just going to give you freedom. Sit here, grow. You think that will grow? Put it on an altar, burn some incense. <laughs> Don't grow. It needs resistance. And resistance means a sort of pain. You remember, I said, no pain, no gain. That's all. Resistance is necessary. All our exercises create some sort of resistance. Even free hand resistance. If you want to develop this biceps, what do you do? You resist with the other hand. And then come on. Slowly. Huh? Huh? That means this hand gives, gives up. And this hand gains. Oh, I pushed him back. So don't look for least resistance ways. No matter how big it is, face it. Your own strength, your own courage will help you a lot. Mental courage. Once you feel that, yes, I can win it, you will. If you say, oh, I don't know, I'll try. <laughs> no. You already lost 75% of your strength by saying, I can try, I'll try. No. <laughs> be bold, be strong. I will achieve it. Today or tomorrow, I am going to get it. Self-assertion. That's very important. Because you need all that will to achieve what you want. So don't look for easy way. If it happens to be easy, all right. And in a way, even the difficult road becomes easy if you are courageous enough. Yes. Even to climb a small summit, it's very difficult if you are weak. But even to climb Mount Everest becomes easy if you are strong enough. Mind over matter. Keep it in mind. Hmm? Don't ask for easy way. 